the facts as they are brought to you every day every day every only day. on GIS Channel 7 Welcome to National Focus, I'm Jana Hector. Topping the headlines, Gordon Henderson and the Karifuna Cultural Group receive Lifetime Curl Awards at the 10th Annual Curl in the Park event, government to host ICT Open House on Wednesday, and the public servants learn from a customer service training the trainers course. All these stories and more when National Focus returns. Documentaries and in-depth discussions, community walkthroughs, and Yes We Care. See it on on GIS Channel 7. Channel 7. Channel 7. Channel 7. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. Public relations and sensitization remain important components of public sector modernization, and as a result, the Information Communication Technology or ICT unit has organized an ICT e government open house for Wednesday. The objective of the open house is to facilitate the dissemination of information through an informative and interactive display of ongoing ICT government initiatives. During this activity, the ICT unit will utilize the opportunity to display and demonstrate various e-government initiatives that are presently being implemented by the government. These e-government projects include Customs and Excise Divisions Assecure the World, Connect to Government, Unified Land Information System or ULIS, online business registration, and the employee's portal. At the open house, staff from the ICT unit, as well as staff from other divisions and ministries who are responsible for the implementation of those various e-government initiatives, will educate public officers and the general public on the key areas of these projects. The general public is invited to attend the open house from 9 a.m. on Wednesday on the ground floor of the government headquarters. In other news, 72-year-old Henry Alexander is the 2012 cultural elder. Alexander was sashed by President of Dominica, His Excellency Eliud Williams, during Heritage Day celebrations in Warner. He was a founding member of the Warner Jinping Band, a member of the Warner Catholic Church Choir, a musician, a farmer, and a community-oriented individual. He also received the plaque and the check from the National Cultural Council and left the stage to cheers and embraces from family and friends. At Sunday's ceremony, awards were presented to Jefferson Warrington and L.U. Alexander in Culture, Matthias Bruno for Community Development, and Karen Lafour, Udelia Stevens, and Harris Regist in Agriculture. Jennifer Julian Loda was chairperson of the Warner Heritage Day Committee. It was back in May when Mr. Raymond Lawrence, Chief Cultural Officer, contacted me as the chairperson of the Warner Development Committee. This was followed by a written communication stating that Cabinet had chosen Warner to host Heritage Day 2012 and assistance of the committee was required in identifying leaders in the community to meet and plan for this activity. This was provided and the ball started rolling immediately after the Warner Village Feast held in that same month. For many, such an activity to be undertaken in a very small community with limited resources would have been a daunting task. But from the onset, as much as we were aware of the magnitude of this event and our limitations, it felt doable. Minister for Social Services, Honorable Gloria Schillingford, in her address at Sunday afternoon ceremony, called on nationals to focus on the island's heritage. Our country's heritage is its history, culture, and way of life, which is handed down from generation to generation. Heritage is therefore meant to direct us back to events and influences in the past that have helped shape us into becoming who we are as a people. So let us celebrate Heritage Day today 
We should perhaps also reflect on the historical events which resulted in the different races, cultures, and the traditions. The various aspects of European, African, and Indian culture that merge together to form what we now proudly know as our own Dominican culture. Parliamentary representative for the Warner community, Honorable Ribbon Blackmore says, Heritage Day should be used as a time for reflection. As we celebrate here today in a free environment, we must never forget our four parents who were enslaved and could not have demonstrated their talent in a free environment as we did, did or we're doing here today. We should not take that for granted. And today offers us, the people of Warner, an opportunity to bring out the brightest versions in us. And how do we do that, therefore? We do that by embracing all of you who came from the various parts of this country to celebrate with us today. We do that in Wana by ensuring that we conduct ourselves in a spirit of peace and love. We do that by ensuring that we bring out the best talent in ourselves through our wear, through our music. Honorable Ambrose George represented Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt at Sunday's event. We have seen many communities showcase their culture, their talent, the history, the heritage throughout these years, these years. And today, we're in water, and certainly there is no exception. What we have witnessed in water today is a very rich culture, very talented people, a rich heritage, and a community, though very small, but one which signifies a great amount as a small community in Dominica. A major aspect of Sunday's event was an interesting exhibition of grown provisions, a few feathered friends, craft items like a miniature chest of drawers, picture frames, straw creations, board games, beds and concrete items, and soft drinks of the past. They went back in time to display a kitchen in the past, milk cans, TV sets, tools, and a 45-year-old baby basin along with a 61-year-old sewing machine. There were also a few items of cultural entertainment.
And Mahos Annette Bates is Madam Wabduet 2012. Bates emerged winner from a field of five contestants last Friday. Other competitors were Idris Favre of Grand Bay, Gertrude Charles of Grand Four, Edith Tuse of Tukari, and Cecilia Esprit of Laplane. Bates was also awarded Best Talent. Edith Tuse of Tukari took first runner-up and Best in Wabduet, and second runner-up was Cecilia Esprit of Laplane. Here now are a few scenes from the pageant. Meanwhile, amidst the color, dance, and excitement surrounding the independence activities this year, one local company has taken action to ensure the long-term beautification of the island. That company, Generation of Opportunities, last week spearheaded a tree planting exercise between the Riverside Apartments and the new Goodwill Link Road. Founder and CEO Rhoda St. John told GIS News that 150 trees were planted, including the country's national flower, the Boakwaib. Also, oleanders and gold monks were planted. The Boakwaibs, which was planted, is our national flower. This was planted by the his Excellency and the Mistress Williams, the Acting Prime Minister Honorable Ambrose George, along with the General Secretariat of UNESCO and other diplomatic corps. In the next probably three to four years, when you pass, you will see the Boak Wives standing tall, representing the nature island of the Caribbean. We also planted the Gold Monks, which is also a very beautiful flower to enhance and protect the environment in which we stand presently, and also oleanders along the river bar, the riverbed which will actually give shade and protect the river line in the Roseau around the Roseau River. The one million hour tree planting project has included the participation of young people. The message that we're hoping to send for the school children is that they too can play a part in protecting the environment. They too can play a part in contributing to climate change and we would like them to plant a plant so that in the next 20 years when they pass they can tell their children, their grandchildren, I planted this plant and they too will appreciate the environment in which they live. St. John is excited about the wave of interest displayed by nationals towards the project. A lot of persons are actually catching on to, it's not just a beautification project, but it's a project to protect the environment. It's a project to, to work towards climate change. And persons are saying that, I want to play a part in protecting the environment. We had this, the, the citizens of the area actually coming out and planting trees together with us today. And we have other persons who saw the need to plant a tree. And they too came from near and far and planted a tree with us. As part of the 1 million hour tree planting project, 150,000 trees will be planted in communities across the island. Finally, the 10th annual Curl in the Park officially began on Monday at the Botanic Gardens in Roseau. The event and initiative of telecommunications company Lime Dominica is a family daytime event which has over the years established itself as a major attraction during the peak moments of the independence celebrations. It provides a one-stop venue for local cuisine, 
outdoor dining and an opportunity to view live performances from local and regional artists and groups. It is also an avenue for companies to promote their products and services at the booths located around the park. For some, it's an opportunity to sit in the park and enjoy all what Dominica has to offer in one location. One of the highlights of Monday's official opening ceremony was the presentation of the Lime Creole Lifetime Awards. One of the awards was presented to Gordon Henderson for his outstanding contribution to the development of Creole music in Dominica and the region. The other was presented to the Carifuna Cultural Group for its contribution to the preservation, development, and regional and international promotion of the Kalinago cultural heritage. Awards were also presented to one of Lime's employees, Fadina Frampton, and local vendor Miranda Joseph for her contribution to Lime's Creole in the Park. President of Dominica, His Excellency Eliud Williams, cut the ribbon to formally declare the event open. Meantime, General Manager of Lime Dominica, Jeffrey Baptist, on Monday reaffirmed his company's commitment to nation building. Lime stands resolute in our commitment to be a major contributor towards the positive economic activity in Dominica. And Creole in the Park is an important pillar to support this commitment. This year's 10th annual Creole in the Park promises to be one that will transcend all others. We will showcase our true Dominican attributes cultural traditions, indigenous culture, local arts and craft, and the passion of our local artists and entertainers will expose their local and their talents. We'll play our part in giving life to the spirit of Caribbean integration with the sharing of cultures with our performers from Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, and Jamaica. Minister for Culture, Honorable Justina Charles, also addressed Monday afternoon's ceremony. It is an event that many people look forward to each year. This year we celebrate our 34th anniversary of independence under the theme, Partnering for Further Progress and Development. I am indeed heartened by the spirit of partnership between the public and private sector as it relates to culture. Lime's 10th annual curl in the park ends on Thursday. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Marcus in St. Louis for the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à cette nouvelle en Creole. Non moins, c'est Marcus in St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement dominique par ministre de Commodité et puis Diaspora Affairs, qui a une fois encore joué et puis Dominicien, qui a vécu l'autre pays qui a visité pour un dépendant. Mettez une salle qui prend place en stadium Windsor Park. Mikwidi le 21 octobre qui a commencé à 6 heures au soir. Il a expecté que discussion qui prend place fait business pour exporter pour deux Dominique en ces différents pays là, c'est Dominique la Kawete. Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, ministère Commodité Honorable Dr John Colin McIntyre, en parmi d'autres officiers qui délivrent l'adresse. Chairman Mitin Sala qui secrétaire cabinet M. Steve Ferrol. Il faut aussi expecter pour lancer un website. Le gouvernement ne peut continuer à mettre attention à ces Dominicains qui vivent dans l'autre pays. En d'autres nouvelles, je vais parler de la cortège Honorable Reginald Austin. Bien plaisir pour le projet hôtel qui a battu en l'occasion. Le gouvernement ne peut pas faire un cadeau de la Morocco. Il a un projet de 30 millions de dollars. Honorable Austin est un parmi les officiers du gouvernement qui t'a visité le projet la semaine passée. Eh Moi-même, je suis bien content pour le projet ça parce que quand, quand nous voyons aujourd'hui, nous avons l'autre monde qui travaille. Comme ça, premièrement, en bas de la construction, le projet a mené en travail dans l'autre monde, puis c'est pour les autres deux ans. Le projet a fini quand on a mené ça, à peu près 100 personnes qui ont fait travail, ça veut dire que c'est permanent, ça veut dire tous les jours. Parce que nous avons des gens qui travaillent en cuisine, nous avons des gens qui passent hard, nous avons des gens qui font des nous avons des gens pour maintenance, nous avons des sécurité, nous avons des gens pour servir, nous avons des gens pour servir. Parce que c'est un projet qui est bien important, pas uniquement pour notre pays, mais pour Dominique. Parce que depuis qu'on est en un high class hotel comme ça, nous avons plus de gens qui viennent de Dominique, plus d'argent à ces airports, plus de taxis, nous avons des gens qui plantent et mangent parce qu'on est pour les poissons, on est pour les dachés, les légumes, tout le monde pour ces gens qui mangent. Et comme je dis, c'est un bon métier pour nous entendre. Parce que pour l'année, nous avons des potentiels pour nous entendre, mais pièce du gouvernement. Parce que ça, l'élevé grand temps, ça fait que l'élevé grand temps. Et quand on a un gouvernement, ça, là, ça, nous avons une université qui nous tapait en bas, là, avant. 
dans le fisheries complex, dans le gros um, hot pot projet, nous avons tué tous ces mauvais bateaux-là, ces biches-là. Et bien, nous avons fait un hôtel, nous avons fait marina, parce que nous avons même en ville qui bénéficie en l'eau, quand il faut avec le travail que le gouvernement a fait. En notre nouvelle département d'établissement qui a organisé la session pour faire et puis ICT e-government open house. La session sala qui prend place en l'occasion du ministère de Mekwedi qui a commencé à 9 ans. L'objectif de l'Open House Salah, c'est pour disséminer l'information de plusieurs ministres et puis le département gouvernement de la public. Il y a un autre bagage qui prend place, c'est la promotion de ce système de website à gouvernement. Le gouvernement donne a conduit le programme Salah et il faut aller avancer de manière publique si vous avez tapé l'information. Le département d'établissement a commandé le public pour attendre. Et puis finalement, le State College Dominique Katarité en cette catégorie teacher, tapé tournement et puis programme Yoka Koui et puis en université Lamiwik, qui a concerné l'éducation de tes enfants. Monsieur Meryl Mafio, c'est directeur des affaires éducation State College Dominique. Les gens qui ont qualifié pour le programme, c'est les gens qui ont complété le programme State College, nous avons créé Associate Degree. Uh, early Childhood Education. C'est mon ça a déjà fini un level et puis nous, nous, nous les points pour un autre level. Quand ça l'autre level là, c'est Bachelor of Education degree à uh, Early Childhood Education. Quand ça c'est mon ça qui qui ça un programme ça. Mais c'est nous pas qu'à target seulement mon qui complète programme là. À State College. N'importe qui, même, même si vous avez fait, nous avons fait un monde qui a complété associate degree early childhood education et puis oui. Ce monde ça aussi, ça va entrer faire bachelor education ça. Mais mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nos nouvelles en créole pour à présent. Non moins c'est Mac Fussen, c'est Luz, qui a de tout le monde en bonne saison, en dépendant. Au revoir. The facts as they are brought to you every day, every day, every day. only on GIS Channel 7. Join the ICT unit at the ICT e Government Open House carded for Wednesday, October 24, 2012, on the ground floor of the government headquarters. Come witness practical demonstrations of e Government and ICT solutions in Customs and Excise Division, Asikuda World, Lands and Surveys Division, Unifield Land Information System, ULIS, and Connect to Government Web Application, and much more. For further information, please contact the Information and Communication Technology Unit at 266-5241. Here are now are a few government notices. The general public is hereby informed that the President's Charities Foundation Incorporated held its ninth annual dinner and dance at the Fort Young Hotel on Saturday, July 7th under the distinguished patronage of His Excellency Dr. Nicholas J. O. Liverpool and Mrs. Liverpool. The foundation realized net proceeds of $38,665.92. All banana and plantain farmers of the Layou Valley area are asked to attend a Black Sigatoka training on the holding of McDonnell Daniel in Liba, Layou. That meeting will be held on Wednesday, October 24th at 9 a.m. Please make a special effort to attend and to be on time. The government of Dominica, through the Ministry of Employment, Trade, Industry and Diaspora Affairs, will once again interact with overseas-based Dominicans who are visiting the country at this time for our 34th independence celebration. That meeting is planned for October 31st on the grounds of the Windsor Park Stadium near the Players Pavilion from 6 p.m. All banana and plantain farmers of Kalibishi are asked to attend a Black Sigatoka de-leafing demonstration on the holding of Mr. Holly George. The meeting is planned for Wednesday, October 24th at 3 p.m. Please make an effort to attend and to be on time. Up next is the tip of the day. There are many reasons why you need to ensure that you get enough sleep, especially during this festive season. Here's one reason. Sleep loss may result in irritability, impatience, inability to concentrate, and moodiness. Too little sleep can also leave you too tired to do the things that you like to do. 
So to ensure that you're in your best mood, be sure to get about 8 hours of sleep between the hours of 9 p.m. and midnight. And that's National Focus. As usual, we invite your suggestions or comments. Please feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Or you could also visit our GIS Dominica pages on both YouTube and Facebook. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. Thanks for watching. Yo,